Greetings in the name of Jesus. It's a new year. Are we, uh, or are we ready for a new year of dying to ourselves, a new year of surrendering our wills to one another, another year of working for the kingdom? This is um, the great opportunity we have every day. We don't have to wait till the next year. We can do it today, we can do it tomorrow. And maybe forever. I'm not sure what our responsibilities are after this time, but not all have made it through this last year that we knew. And it's um, maybe our turn this year. For whatever reason, I totally forgot about it's my turn this morning. So on the way over here, or almost on the way over here, so... Um, so this is not thought out for sure but if we can uh, I don't think it's all that complicated to serve God it is complicated when we try to find ways around God's ways and um, but I did sit down before we after we're here and I I, uh, I would just like to read 1 Corinthians 12 now concerning spiritual gifts brothers and sisters I do not want you to be uninformed or I think the King James says ignorant you know that when you were pagans you were enticed and led astray to idols and could, that could not speak Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, Let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. No one is given, no one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another, sorry, no, to one is given through the Spirit of utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. Uh, just a quick thought uh, on. Um, To each is given the manifestation there in verse 7 spirit uh, of the Spirit for the common good. So the gifts that we have, if they're not for the common good, it's not a, can I say it's not of the Spirit? It, if it's of the body, it's going to work for the body. It's not going to be for me selfishly or you selfishly. It's for, if it's not for the body, just take it as a warning that it's for selfishness one way or another. Uh, and to one is given the spirit of utterance of wisdom, and to another he's just saying the different things. And to one, another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, and another the discernment of spirits. To other, to another variance, various tongues, various kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. There's another place uh, I think it's the Apostle says that God places us in the body as He pleases. So I say, I'm going to be in the body as I want is not the right direction. I am going to be something in this body uh, is not the right direction. But God pleases us. God places us as He pleases. Um, and I I kind of, I guess when I was struggling through that thought, like how do I find a church? Where do I go to? Well, he will, pl he can place me where he wants if I allow him to, and that's uh, was a real relaxation for me, a real, real blessing to. Um, like I don't have to necessarily figure that all out myself, and besides, I'm not even sure I could. I'm not sure that I have the wisdom to figure all that out myself. I'm glad he leads and, and guides and directs. 
And when I look back in my life, I can just testify to that. that I would not, I would have not made it here myself. I'm pretty sure. I just don't think I would have. Been a bit of a big accident if I would have. But uh, God can place us where He wants, and we can work in in that. And there's many things that go together with that. For just as the body is one and has many members, all the members of the body, through many though many, are one body, and so it is with Christ. And I have a belief about this one body that I cannot fully explain, excepting I believe it. If, if, the, if the people are not one, the people of God are not one, I think something's wrong. But how to fix all that, I don't know. But personally, I want to live in such a way that I am uh, capable of, of doing that. I don't know if that makes any sense, but it's... Um, some people just take the idea that well there's all these different churches so pick what you want I maybe we have to do that but I don't think I have the liberty to do that <laughs> I, uh, we have to um, press into it ourselves and find those that are pressing into it and be one with them and I can tell you that most people think they're doing that and everybody thinks they got it figured out. So um, there's still one God and one body. I don't have the answers to all that. But we need to press into it. We need to seek for that. For in the one spirit we were baptized into one body. And another place it says Jesus died that we might be one. So he's, it's this great, this great desire of God that we are together. Um, not together in in cliques that oh well, we're something but that we're together in serving the kingdom this king this master this lord if we humble ourselves below him I'm pretty sure we can get along I know we can indeed the body does not consist of one member but of many if the foot would say because I'm not a hand I am not I do not belong to the body that would not make it any less a part of the body if the ear would say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body. That would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? And if the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. So if the hand wouldn't have any respect for the ear, it might tear at it and rip it off. He wouldn't care. But the body, thankfully, has a master. It's our mind. The church has a master. It's Jesus. If all the were a single, if all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor, and our less respectful members are treated with greater respect. This sounds like Jesus' teachings of uh, preferring one another to ourselves. And um, if we even have the idea that we might be greater than somebody else, that we become a servant and not, not a master. Um, I think this is how Christ's body works. We become subject one to another. And though we're not perfect in this, we've got to strive for it, seriously. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior body member, that there may be no dissension within the body. But the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now, if you are the body of Christ, an individual member of it and God has appointed 
in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. All Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? These are all question marks. But strive for the greater gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. When we love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our mind, all our soul, all our strength, and we love our neighbor as ourself, first we care most what God thinks, and then we get busy helping others. Um, we won't go very wrong in seeing Him someday. Well, that's all I have. Lord bless you. Thank you. One of the things that I feel like I learned this week, riding in the on the way back and learning, and just out there sharing uh, the gospel with those young people, is um, every example I think I've ever seen of of sharing the gospel really didn't have respect for the people they were trying to reach. Um, um, one of the things I felt like I learned this week was listening and being quiet and listening to Brother Dwayne about, you know, um, until you've done a good job, actually a good job hearing and listening to the other person, they probably don't, won't have the respect to listen to you. And, you know, as they've kind of given me counsel for, you know, my home, um, it made me really think about this, uh, now as we were reading this verse, maybe, you know, hear about, uh, and those that we think to be less honorable of the body around these, we put more abundant honor, and our unseemly things have, having seemliness more abundant, and our seemly things have no need. And... As we were discussing that this morning, it really kind of helped bring the picture of together of, um, you know, as we consider those young people that um, seem to be very worldly and whose the way that they live is dishonorable to God and is not proper and unseemly to God, um, us, the necessary, the necess the, ne the need to bestow greater honor upon them, you know, with, of course, in my belief, and our belief that we're out there to, to help them because they are lacking much, but, you know, and so you could say that we are the more honorable ones and the more seemly and proper ones, and so for us to go out there, you know, um, maybe we, we, they didn't need to respect us, but we needed to respect them. And as I think about the home, you know, the, I think that same principles there, that's what they were counseling me. And as I think about church government, um, you know, we consider, you know, a brother that, or, you know, or a sister that, you know, so, oh, they're just, I just, something's not right here. And like, oh, we just need to get, I just need to set them straight, get my guns blazing and going and, and just interrupting and, and this is all things that I've been doing for years, and I realize how blind and foolish I've been. So this is now a confession. But um, in realizing that, even though we consider like Brother Dwayne and Walter, um, and they are our, our leaders, um, the what they've been trying to teach me this week is that why they are the more honorable ones um, that uh, and I see that the way that they've been trying to lead and, and govern the assembly here is that by bestowing greater honor on all of us by listening to us being patient with us and not lording over us even though 
you know, they do stand in the place of Christ in this place. Still, they don't, and it's, they bestow greater honor on us and, and, um, uh, and that is how, um, as Brother Walter was sharing, is, you know, around, you know, around these we, we do put more. And so that's the way of God. And I really appreciate you getting to learn this lesson. I think I would have spared a lot of trouble in my life if I understood it sooner. So I'm very grateful for the reinforcement. I needed that this morning. And uh, God bless you. Thank you, Brother Walter. <coughs> uh, that the word of the Lord be magnified. And that, that word is... is uh, son, oh, oh, how I'd like to be... Like uh, Hebrews 11, wouldn't you like to be like, you know, David and Abraham and Ruth and Esther and all oh, the great. And, and right here, Walter read about the apostles and, and things like that. I think in the book of Jeremiah, Baruch, Baruch says in the book of Jeremiah, uh, well, God says rather to Baruch in the book of Jeremiah, don't think great things for yourself. Don't. And just, you're going to get your... You're going to be saved, like Jeremiah. Well, Jeremiah, you know, was, wasn't... Uh, uh, he was speared, and they say eventually he died in captivity. Could have been... But, but um, he... God told Baruch, don't think great things for yourself. And in 1 Corinthians 12 and in Romans 12, uh, the, the less... The, pot, the ordinary Jane and Joe Christian is, is... The millions of them, and there's only like 12 apostles and... How many people in Hebrews? But they're the ones, they're the crown and jury, the crown and glory of, of God. And, uh, and what you said, Brother Alec, amen. Um, uh, don't dwell in the past. I mean, I, you know, do I, such was some of you. I mean, if I think of all the sins I've committed before I was baptized, I, I say that, you know, that's, it's just too much. But, but uh, we all have some baggage in the past. And, and we don't, uh, dwell, forgetting those things. And we, we press on and we move. And so the young people you talk to, just by planting little, little seeds, it, it could, it, it's, 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 it's of great value, I believe. But as Walter read in the one comment, and last one is that um, God has set some in church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles and helps. And then they end, the end, and, you know, uh, chapter 12 ends but the next verse in chapter 13 says I show you a more excellent way and that excellent way is love and we have greater things than than any of those gifts of miracles and things if we have humility and love in our heart to think of others greater than ourselves, and we have the assurance of God when we love the brethren and keep the commandments and I love all you brethren the Lord be magnified